Hey, thanks for joining us here on Full Circle. I'm Anderson Cooper. We've got a lot going on today. Uh, thanks for joining us here in the New York City newsroom. We've got a lot to get to. As always, we want to hear from you. Weigh in with your thoughts in the comments. If you ever want to quiet those comments, just swipe to the right. Tonight, Demi Lovato is in the hospital because of an apparent overdose. We'll get the latest on that, as well as the stories that you voted for. Plus the 180, your chance to ask me questions. Dog may, dogs may be man's best friend, but what about the rest of the animal kingdom? I'll tell you a lot more about some canine news making the rounds, as well as get Cesar Milan's take on it. But for now, ask me anything you want about Beasts of the Wild. I'll do my best to answer as many questions as I can later on in the program. And my question for you is, if you could have gone to college early and graduated at age 11, would you have done that? I'll tell you later about one kid who made just that choice. But for now, please vote yes or no. If you're watching live on your phone or tablet, you should see your choices on the bottom half of the screen. Vote away, then swipe down to clear it. And while you're at it, tag a friend you think might have strong feelings about this one. I want to know what they think as well. We'll get you uh, final results of what everyone thinks before the end of the program on the question. We'll start with the first thing first. One of the top trending stories on Facebook right now, sadly, it involves singer Demi Lovato, a source close to her family, telling CNN she is in the hospital after suffering an apparent drug overdose. Sadder still, this is happening just weeks after she, who is uh, Lovato, who's long struggled with addiction, released a single which revealed she was using again. The title, Sober, in it she sings, I'm sorry for the fans I lost who watched me fall again. I want to be a role model, but I'm only human. She's also just 25 years old and said in March she had six years of sobriety behind her. We don't yet know her condition tonight. We certainly wish her a full recovery and all the very best. Now on to the five things you want to know. You voted on your top stories on this page and we spent the day digging uh, into them. Here are your top five. At number five today, this. You look at this, uh, this girl, Ocasio Cortez, or whatever she is. That was Republican Congressman Ron DeSantis talking about Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. DeSantis is running for Florida's governor, is supported by President Trump. Ocasio Cortez is, of course, the 28 year old Democratic candidate for Congress from New York's 14th District. She won a stunning primary race last month, beating a 10 term incumbent. She tweeted this to Congressman DeSantis quote, seems you're confused as to whatever I am. I am a Puerto Rican woman. It's strange you don't know what that is, given the 75,000 Puerto Ricans have relocated to Florida in the 10 months since Maria. But I'm sure these new Florida voters appreciate your comments. DeSantis responded with this tweet, uh, tweet. My problem is not with your identity, but with your unhinged socialist views. Socialism doesn't work. Israel isn't occupying Palestine. Borders matter and the unemployment rate is down because of good policies, not because people are working two jobs. Ocasio-Cortez campaign with Senator Bernie Sanders in Kansas just last week to help a pair of progressive candidates in that state. At number four today, a California appeals court today heard arguments about whether Brock Turner, a former Stanford swimmer, should be granted a new trial. Turner was not in the courtroom today. He was convicted for the 2015 assault on an unconscious woman after she left campus fraternity party. The 22-year-old was ordered to register as a sex offender for life. California appeals court has 90 days to decide whether he should get a new trial. And the new development comes more than a month after Santa Clara County voters recalled the judge who oversaw the first trial. The community is upset that Turner was sentenced to just six months in a county jail and only served three months due to jail overcrowding. Our number three story, at least 74 people have died in the worst wildfires to hit Greece in more than a decade. Hundreds of people have been evacuated. A state of emergency has been declared. The Greek prime minister urged people in threatened neighborhoods to flee immediately. He also declared three days of mourning. The fire is a part of a heat wave that has stretched across Europe, triggering wildfires in Sweden, setting record high temperatures even in the Arctic. Coming up in number two, uh, the story that seems like the confirmation of something that I always hoped was true. A new study shows that dogs actually rush to help when their owners cry or in distress. In the study, dogs were faster to jump up and open a door when their owners made crying noises than when they hummed twinkle, twinkle, little star. This is not only incredibly sweet, but researchers say it also could influence how service dogs are trained. We're still learning a lot about how dogs process emotion and the intelligence of dogs, something I've seen firsthand in my own dog, Lily. We'll have more on this story in our full circle uh, interview in just a moment with Cesar Milan. In case you have any questions for him, now's your chance to get those questions in. As well as your questions for the 180, the questions I answered tonight, let's keep talking about dogs and other animals. Now to the number one thing you voted for today. There's an iceberg sitting just off the coast of a tiny village in Greenland, and there are concerns it could split or roll and send tsunami-like waves crashing toward land. 
The iceberg is grounded at the moment with huge masses above and below the water, making it unstable and locals say more likely to crack. Incredible pictures. This part of Greenland is no stranger to large icebergs, but this one is more dangerous than most. Its colossal size alone would be remarkable, but it's also closer than most to the shore. Thankfully, winds and the tide are helping it drift slightly north and farther from land. Evacuated residents have been able to return to their homes, at least for now. So those were the, uh, the five stories you most want to know about. Check back on our Facebook page tomorrow so you can vote again on to the, uh, the Full Circle interview. I told you about that new study on dogs and human emotions. Joining me to talk about it, the dog whisperer, Caesar Milan. Caesar, great to see you. Thanks for being with us. Were you surprised Thank by you, man. Were you surprised by the results of this study that, that dogs go to try to help their owners when they seem to be in distress? Absolutely not. They've been doing it um, all along. I, I mean, that's why I, I train people and rehabilitate dogs. That's that's my whole thing. We can learn more from dogs about this empathy, this compassion, this ability to live in the moment, you know, this unconditional love. So I'm glad, you know, that people are paying attention to this finally and they are uh, treating the dog with all this respect and, and, and uh, amazing way of being. You actually think dogs have maybe even more to teach us than humans have to teach dogs. I say, you know, I'm a student of dogs. I, I don't train dogs. I train people. I, I train people to, to take direction, you know, what a dog already knows. A, a dog knows to help you. A dog knows to love you. A dog knows to protect you. A dog knows to keep you company. He knows how to do that. So there are, in my experience, in my opinion, there are definitely more evolved beings than, than where we are right now. Do, the, the dogs you have, do they... Do they know your emotions right away? I mean, do, they, do you get the sense that they are tracking your emotions all the time? That's what they're in touch. You know, they're in touch with how you feel. And, and that's what we are looking for a dog because we want, I mean, the, the only thing a dog wants, uh, uh, wants to help you do, achieve is happiness. So at the moment you're not happy, they know, you know? So they don't know why you're not happy. They just know that you're not happy at that moment. I, you know, I, so, so they're, of course, they're in tune to us. I read something where you said that dogs already know how to eat, pray, love, you were referencing the title of that book. Can you just <laughs> explain what you mean by that? Well, the, you know, as people go to India, people go to Bali, people go to Italy to experience this, when a dog already is telling you how to experience love, how to experience the simple things in life, you know, how to experience a spirituality, purpose, meaning, and value. So, so a dog to me is, a, is, a, is someone who reminds me simplicity, natural, and profound. Hmm. Uh, Caesar, it's good to talk to you. Caesar Milan, thanks so much for being with us. Tonight's, Thank uh, you, guys. All right, tonight's 180. Let's uh, stay on the subject of man's best friend. The staff here has been uh, sharing their favorite stories about their own pets all day, as well as reminiscing about some of these special moments one could say that I've had with animals over the years. Plus, it's Shark Week, so what better time to answer some questions about the stories I've done with animals. Karen asks, how many times have you been upstaged by an animal? Pretty much any time I've been with an animal, I've been upstaged by them. Uh, it's hard not to be. Uh, John wants to know, have you ever been near lions or tigers? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I've done a bunch of safaris in, in Africa, and, um, and also uh, we went to a, uh, a wildlife sanctuary in Cambodia, uh, one time, and I think there was a, a, a tiger there, if, and memory serves. And if memory serves me, it actually urinated on my cameraman, Neil Hallsworth. Um, that was a special moment. Amy asks, what's the one animal that scares you the most? Would you conduct an interview if that animal was present and near you? You know, I used to be really scared of great white sharks and uh, sharks in general, and I love swimming in the ocean, but I was always kind of freaked out about the idea of sharks. And then I went uh, diving, uh, scuba diving a couple times, both for CNN and for 60 Minutes, with a guy named Mike Rutzen off the ca uh, coast of Cape Town, um, and uh, he, free, uh, basically diving, scuba diving with great white sharks without a cage. And it, I gotta say, it was terrifying. The water was chummed, it had blood in it. Uh, and there were about six or so sharks, if I recall correctly, circling around. But to see them up close like that and to realize that we're not necessarily on their food chain. They're, they are curious. They occasionally bite people, and sometimes people bleed out, and that's usually how people die from uh, shark attacks. Um, but sharks usually don't actually eat people. Later I dove with uh, Nile crocodiles, and Nile crocodiles do eat people, and I certainly wouldn't recommend that. Uh, Kelly wants to know, what pets do I have? I've got a, uh, a Welsh Springer Spaniel named Lily. I had one before named Molly, and she passed away, uh, and so uh, I got a relative of, of hers, and uh, I'm a big dog person. That's my dog, Lily, right there. She's, uh, that, she's very wet there and very smelly there, but I, I love her even in those moments, maybe more than ever. Uh, thanks so much for your questions. want to finish up with the bad and the goods. One story that may make you cringe, one that leaves you feeling good. First, the bad. 
Five words, naked guy at the gym. And I'm not even talking about in the locker room. Police in Massachusetts arrested a man for stripping down inside a Planet Fitness, not in the locker room, mind you, uh, right out there in the middle of the gym, chilling on a yoga mat. That guy, yeah. He told police he thought it was, quote, a judgment-free zone, which is, in fact, a Planet Fitness slogan. Others were not at all uh, pumped by the idea, shall we say. To me, it's like, what did you smoke before you came to the gym? Why would you do that? People are uncomfortable, make you uncomfortable. It's, that's weird. Weird indeed, weird and bad. Now for the goods, we'd like you to, uh, to meet one of the newest graduates of St. Petersburg College in Florida, William uh, Makeless. Uh, excuse me, William Maylis just got an associate in arts degree and he is 11 years old, 11. Imagine that. Listen to what he told CNN affiliate uh, Bay News 9 about whether college was difficult for him at such a young age. About as difficult as anybody else going there. I'm gifted in what I'm gifted in and other people are gifted in other things. So what's next? Well, he's a kid. He probably wants to take it easy, right? Enjoy the summer, has plenty of time to figure out what he wants to do when he grows up. Except, yeah, he already knows what he wants, including getting a PhD by the time he is 18. I want to be an astrophysicist. I want to prove to the world that God does exist through science. Pretty amazing kid uh, going around studying astrophysics, trying to prove God exists through science. Uh, congratulations, William. Just an incredible accomplishment there. Uh, 11 years old. Amazing. So now you get why uh, I'm asking you if you would have graduated college at 11, if you could have. Big if, right? Here's what uh, you all thought. 38% of you said yes, you would have. Uh, bring on real life at 11. 62% of you said no way, no, that if you miss out on those cherished teen years in homeroom, never. Uh, I don't think I would do it at 11 either. I think, uh, I think, the, I don't know, I'd like to have a little bit more years before I get to college for that. Also take a look at how you reacted to, uh, to the newscast tonight. Look, uh, looks like overall your strongest emotion was love. We certainly always appreciate that. Nice to feel the love here on Facebook. It's why we keep coming back. That does it for us. Thanks so much for joining us. If you like what you saw, Let's make the relationship Facebook official and follow us on our Facebook page, Anderson Cooper Full Circle. I hope you join me again tomorrow on our page here with the things you want to know. We'll be back live at 6.25 p.m. Eastern. Until then, tune to AC 360 at 8 p.m. Eastern on CNN. Tonight, what the president is now saying about Russia's attack on our election. We're keeping them honest. I'll see you soon.